JBN, we keep you informed. I am Michelle Jones, and in the news, gun seized in St. James. A team of officers assigned to the St. James Police Division seized an illegal gun during an operation today on the Rumble Hill Main Road in the parish. The Montego Bay Police reports that about 1.58 a.m., lawmen were in the area when they saw two men on a motorcycle. The driver of the motorcycle was signaled to stop. However, he disobeyed the instructions and drove in a different direction. During their escape, an object fell from one of them. A 9mm Browning pistol was subsequently retrieved. No one was arrested in relation to this seizure. Investigations are ongoing. Teen charge following carjacking incident in Manchester. A Manchester teenager has been charged with kidnapping and several gun-related crimes following an incident in the parish last month. His 18-year-old Dajon Hamilton, otherwise called Digi, of New Hall District, Manchester. The Jamaica Constabulary Forces Corporate Communications Unit, CCU, says he was charged on Sunday with kidnapping, shooting with intent, illegal possession of firearm, and illegal possession of ammunition. The police say about 5.30 p.m. on July 25, a woman was driving home from work when Hamilton and another man, Jermaine Robinson, otherwise called Chubby, drove into the back of her vehicle along the New Green Road in Mandeville. They reportedly demanded that she exited the vehicle. The CCU says one of the men then brandished a handgun and ordered the woman back inside the vehicle and she complied. The men were afterwards intercepted by the police whom they engaged in a gun battle during which Robinson was shot dead. According to the police, Robinson was reporting on bail for a previous charge of robbery with aggravation and would have returned to court in September. Hamilton turned himself in with his lawyer and was pointed out during an identification parade. The woman was not hurt. Sent and police launch major operation. Members of the public were earlier today told to avoid the general vicinity of Little Don's River in Ocherius, St. Anne, where the police were conducting an operation. This follows the killing of a man in the area on Saturday evening. His 25-year-old Roshin Osen, otherwise called Breda, of Geisel St. Mary and Mansfield St. Anne. The police are theorizing that his killing is linked to an ongoing gang feud. There are probing reports that a gang from the Stereton community in the parish has a foothold in the area. Acting head of the St. Anne Police, Superintendent David White, said that the scene of crime was cordoned off to facilitate further investigations. Ken Cutter charged with murder of common law wife in St. Catherine. Ken Cutter Sherwin Collins, otherwise called Billy, has been charged with the stabbing murder of his common law wife in St. Catherine on August 21. He was charged on Monday by the St. Catherine police. The deceased is 24 year old hairdresser Alicia Patience of Lawidesville in St. Catherine. It's alleged that about 6 30 pm on August 21, the two had a disagreement which escalated. During the dispute, the woman was stabbed in the neck. She later succumbed to her injuries. Collins reportedly ran from the scene, but was later turned over to the Shady Grove Police. He was arrested on suspicion of murder, and upon completion of his file, he was formally charged. Blue Lagoon closed for restructuring. Blue Lagoon, one of Jamaica's most popular visitor attractions, which was named a national monument two years ago, was closed on Monday for restructuring to ensure improvements that the island's tourism authorities here needed for compliance with the law. Vendors at the Portland attraction, famous for its glistening, turquoise blue water surrounded by a lush greenery, had started pulling down their stalls some Sunday in compliance with a closure notice issued after a meeting with stakeholders earlier this month. From early Monday morning, police and soldiers were at the attraction to oversee the operation. There was no opposition to the closure, however, which journalists were told earlier this month should last a month. According to the tourism product development company TPD Co, the restorative work will be implemented in three phases. The first will include sensitization for two operators by the police force and the Coast Guard. Phase two will see the engagement of Blue Lagoon Alliance members, Jamaica National Heritage Trust, JNHD, Alligator Head Foundation, and TPD Co. It will involve training, registration, and a certification of personnel from the area to ensure best practices. The agency said in a news release this month, adding that a comprehensive cleanup of the area will be done by the National Solid Waste Management Authority. 
The final phase will see the JNHD and TPD co-adopting a draft co-management agreement and establishing the Blue Lagoon as a protected area. A determination will also be done of the activities that will be allowed and a timeline will be established for the reopening of the facility, the release had said. NWA says significant funds and engineering needed to address flooding in Lucy. The National Works Agency, NWA, says significant funding and engineering will be needed to address flooding in Lucy, Hanover. Sections of the parish are flooded following heavy rain on Monday. NWA Communication Manager Stephen Shaw says more flooding is likely with more rainfall in the forecast. He urged people heading from Montague Bay to Negril to bypass Lucy and instead travel through Savlomar, Westmoreland. However, Mr. Shaw admitted that that particular stretch could also be affected by flooding and so it may also need attention in the future. Roads and at least one bridge became impassable during heavy rain in Lucy on Monday. During the downpour, the Raleigh River overflowed its banks and the NWA said this affected several communities. People had to be transported in makeshift boats along flooded streets. In sports news, NJ hunts $8 million for Elite League. Netball Jamaica NJ needs approximately $8 million to restart the Elite League, Jamaica's premier netball competition. The competition has not been played since 2019 because of the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as the resultant financial pinch. And according to Vice President of NJ, Simone Forbes, the Elite League is important as it provides players for the Sunshine Girls. Forbes is appealing to corporate Jamaica to assist NJ to achieve the $8 million to restart the league. This league is extremely important for us. This is a top netball league in the country where the top 60 netball players in Jamaica play in. This is a league where the Sunshine Girls are mostly selected from. And so for us to be able to compete against the top teams in the world, the local players who are playing in Jamaica would have to be playing in a league at a level, like that of Suncorp Super League in Australia. That is where we want to get to, because we want the best local players to be playing every week in a competitive league, Forbes said. The Sunshine Girls, who are ranked third in the world, won a historic silver medal at the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham, England, earlier this month with 12 players based in Jamaica. Forbes, a former national player, pointed out that our organization is hoping to restart the competition in January once they can secure a sponsor. It is extremely important for us to get a sponsor to put on this league that has been on a break for the last three seasons due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We do not have a sponsor at the moment, and so we're seeking to find a title sponsor. And if we're not able to get that, then we'd like to get in as many sponsors as we can where the six teams can have a sponsor, Forbes said. We're hoping that this can be realized because the start date for this competition is around January 2023, she said. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.